Good evening and welcome to this very special episode of Cut the Clutter with the Prince Editor in Chief uh, Shekhar Gupta. As Cut the Clutter marks 1000 episode, we want to extend our gratitude to our viewers and subscribers, not just in India but across the world. And as promised, we have with us Shekhar Gupta who will answer questions from our subscribers as well as our viewers. So let's begin this very special edition of Cut the Clutter. And thank you for joining us on this 1000th edition, Neelam Pandey. Neelam Pandey is one of our senior most editors in our stellar political team. And she's just started a new political show. Yes. Uh, I think the next one you will see maybe, maybe by the time this one is out or maybe a few hours after that. And that will be on a very fascinating but the complex issue of Bhumihar caste politics. When we talk of caste politics, we say Brahmin, Thakur, then That's OBCs. Cool. Dalits, but Bhumihars get missed out. But in Bihar, every caste counts. Right. <laughs> so, so, so she has her first show about the complexities of the Bhumihar caste and how that is worrying the BJP. So I'm not the only one who declutters things for you or on the print. Uh, Cut the Clutter, of course, has now been around for a thousand episodes. Thank you very much, all of you, for being for staying with it. It started small, but it has picked up. Uh, yes. And as we go along, I will also tell you uh, how the idea came up uh, in conversation with Neelam. And there are some questions also. But let me tell you that in 1000 episodes, we've had more than 25 crore views. Wow. <laughs> and in English language, it's not bad. Uh, 25 crore views in 1000 episodes. And we've averaged upwards of 1000 responses to each episode. So that means more than a million responses. Uh, which tells us that one that okay we can we can boast and say that our engagement le levels are very good but it also shows that our viewers are very sharp and very smart and quite often they catch mistakes that I make <laughs> yes. uh, because I think on my I think on my feet and I don't speak from a script uh, so thank you very much for catching me and whenever I notice one of those I make comments and I am very grateful to you, especially for that. So we will start with some of the questions that we have received from our viewers. Uh, Prakar Khandelwal, he's congratulated us. Thank you so much. And he wants to know, which is the one episode or topic of CTC which you had to learn about or delve deeper or something that you were completely not aware of? Well, uh, there was a whole bunch of them done on coronavirus. Uh, of course, I knew that there are viruses and I knew some basic viruses, but almost 99% of what we spoke about over the course of more than a year when we did so many episodes on COVID, uh, each one was learning. Right. E each one was involved a great deal of learning because coronavirus research also science reached another level. And this wasn't just about science. This, uh, this was about our lives. Mm. So we had to learn a lot and uh, understand a lot. It was imperative that we should be as accurate as possible but again you had you were dependent also on what was state of the art mm. what is it that you understood of a situation by then so many of the things that we understood at that point at any particular point changed going ahead so it was also like shooting at a moving target so that was the most challenging thing and then there are other things for example there are countries that we might know nothing about uh, now moldavia Right. Who knew about Moldavia? It's only now when Putin's people said that we want a corridor through southern Ukraine into Transnistria. What is Transnistria? Moldavia at least naam to suna hai. <laughs> Transnistria, who knows? So that is completely new learnings or learnings about the war in Ethiopia, which is right. one of the nastiest wars going on in the world right now, except that it's Africa. So people don't care so much about it. Some of the biggest genocides are taking place there or Mali or the Sahel region, right? So all that, uh, in fact, I am grateful to viewers of uh, Cut the Clutter because you've all kept on coming. That's given me the impetus to continue doing it five days a week, sometimes even six days a week. In yes. fact, initially it was six days a week because if you had not shown this much interest, you would, you would have saved me a lot of hard work. But uh, <laughs> I know a lot of you watch, a lot of you wait for it. So I also, every time I want to shirk, I think of I think of you and I can say I can't I can't let down 
our viewers our readers you are wonderful people and we hope you will continue to watch another member wants to yes, know yes please please take a membership yes. uh, we respond to our members and we are building a whole bunch of new benefits for our members please stay with us for the next few weeks and you will see this these benefits rolling out and all these details are available on our website it's a very simple process so please do subscribe uh, one of our members wants to know over the years has it become easier running an online news outlet and is being an editor of a newspaper more difficult or a digital media house well i can tell you uh, when when i was i was editor of a newspaper i was also the editor of its online presence right and right. the indian express group group has a very strong online presence but this technology moves very fast so mm. this technology has moved uh, greatly and uh, what i have realized after setting this up in the process of setting up the print is one that the that technology is a big enabler for us so mm. entry barriers in our business have come down by not not a ratio of 1, 1 is to 10 but even less so if it, if it cost you a thousand crores to set a media organization earlier to build the kind of audiences that we have today it takes 50 crores to do that so that's a big change also uh, the real the sheer pleasure of set building a new newsroom to do that and newsrooms are built when people find audience quickly so if you if you launch a print newspaper or a tv channel it will take you forever build audience of the size that we have built right now we have more than uh, we have uh, 20 million uh, visitors to our website uh, mostly in english language we are still expanding our hindi offering so that tells you that uh, there are there are benefits here and there are learnings here and i can tell you that i am learning something new every day so you know that old saying you can't teach an old dog new tricks <laughs> uh, right old dogs can also learn new tricks and anand kulkarni wants to know what changes can we see at the prince youtube channel in the next 3 years see what is modern journalism all of you are smart people you know duniya mein kya hua kahan hua kisne kiya right uh, you know that ukraine and russia are fighting you know the west is on ukraine side you know the china is chinese mm. are somewhere there with russia etc all of that you know now if 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 something happens in that war you will know so what is it that journalism does now so when we all went to journalism school or if you read definition of news anywhere you will be told that it is 5 w's and 1 h yes. what where who why when, when and h is how. how so what where who when this all of you know now so we are left with how and the why and we add one more why and we had one more what next mm. so that is what our journalism is all about and going ahead you will see a lot more of that on our youtube channel having said that you will also see us us filling up the platter a little bit more so you might see a bit more of back of the book mm. more features you might see some sport which we have been ignoring so far which is a crime uh, in my view uh, i started my life as a sports correspondent so i can't let down uh, <laughs> that area and also you will see some some bit of cinema or what is called what i call culture and you know what neelam uh, it has taken us three and a half years to get to the thousand episode because after all this one a day and five a week right. so it will take us another three and a half years to get to the next thousand <laughs> so we are going to have not just one special episode for the thousand but two aapne suna hai na ji my birthday comes just once a year <laughs> i wish i could have two so we so we we'll have two birthdays 2000 episode uh, uh, specials so the second one will put out this sunday where we talk about some of the highlights out of our episodes done so far and a little bit about how the idea developed and our journey over this period Uh, so now we are moving on to some economy related questions aditya wants to know on one hand we are seeing record collection of gst in the month of april and on the other hand we are seeing inflation you know that's reaching around 7% and forex reserves of countries decreasing so what is your thoughts on the current economic situation look economics is complex uh, like much else economics is a science uh, i don't have basic education in economics but i am learning all all the time now one thing that you must understand with economics is that 2 and 2 does not make 4 uh, because 
the conclusions that seem obvious to us are not so obvious for yeah. example if inflation goes up gst collection will go up because gst is on the price of a product so if the price goes up the tax also goes up because tax is a percentage right. so if the price is 100 rupees tax is 28 rupees right but if the price is 200 rupees the same thing will cost you the same same thing will get you a tax of 56 rupees because it's 28 percent at the top slab so because inflation is rising uh, there is no contradiction between rising inflation and rising gst collections uh, if anything there is a de direct correlation what, what are your thoughts that the forex reserves of the country forex is decreasing forex reserves are falling for see first of all forex reserves just as they rise they also fall so to think that forex reserves will not fall they'll only keep rising it may happen for a country like china hmm. which is a, which is mainly a export oriented economy but a country which generally has def has a deficit in its trade uh, forex reserves rise as well as fall in china's case also now they must have fallen i haven't studied it they must have fallen because what happens to countries when they have forex reserves so countries don't keep those reserves in their pocket or in their currency or in their banks by definition forex reserves have to be kept in forex right hmm. as simple as that so most countries keep their forex reserves in or most of their reserves in dollar because us dollar is the reserve currency of the world now how do you keep in the dollars you buy us bonds us treasury bonds which give you almost nothing by way of interest uh, now they might give you some interest because interest rates are turning positive in there is inflation in the us also but you keep your money there then you balance it you keep some in japanese yen some in british pounds right. some in uh, euro and a bunch of it in gold so if the gold price goes down then that part of your reserves will come down if the gold price goes up that part of your reserves goes 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 up similarly if the american bonds come down in value that the money the reserves that you have in us bonds they lose value so right now indian reserves have fallen by about 45 billion dollars right they've gone below 600 billion dollars so one reason is that over the past 3 4 months a lot of the fii's and others have pulled out their money from indian markets they pulled out because earlier they were getting no interest in american markets and foreign markets but particularly american markets but now because they have inflation there they're getting interest there because fed has upped the interest rates so they are pulling money out because they feel safer uh, some is that some of it's happened because of that and some of it's happened because india has a large part of its reserves sitting in us dollar bonds and those bonds have lost value so what happens in bond markets is it's again my learning and i keep telling myself because it sounds so counterintuitive that as interest rates go up on bonds the value of bonds comes down so interest rates are going up so the value of bonds is coming down that's the reason i say that even the chinese reserves i am sure have come down in their current value because chinese have one and a half trillion dollars worth of american bonds well we've received a number of questions i'll continue with some more from our members raghav khurana wants to know do you believe we are at the changing world order from usa to china especially with rising saudi rial using yuan as a petro currency well first of all i do not see uh, rial or the yuan uh, replacing the dollar because just ask yourself an honest question everybody says that oh americans have confiscated or detained Russia's dollars, Russia's exchange, uh, Russia's foreign exchange reserves in dollar. Americans have done it, and though this is, this is a warning for the entire world that Americans can do it for you, do it to you. So don't put your money in American dollar. Put the money in yuan. So if the Americans can do it, the Chinese, who will trust the Chinese? So this whole idea that the yuan will now become the reserve currency of the world. Before that, the Chinese have to. Chinese have to before that convince the world that the Chinese have some bit, bit of honesty in their heads or in their hearts when it comes to their own national interest because they put that ahead of everything else and more importantly Chinese first will have to become a more convincing a more comforting presence to their own neighbors right China is today a menace to almost all its neighbors so this is not going to happen this is all theoretical faltu talk 
this real and yuan uh, euro in any case is struggling right it's not going to happen so that's a very definite answer it's not happening another member wants to know can you state three positives and negatives from modi government you know eight years of their uh, government and if you can compare it with the ups tenure well i think that is almost an essay or uh, that's a national interest article and you given me an idea <laughs> i might do it one of these days but i think if you look at uh, on the top of my head uh, the positives the most important positive is that uh, our economic uh, stability has not only remained but it's become uh, become stronger because there were lots of worries even in my head after demonetization happened that uh, this government was prone to some fanciful ideas because demonetization was like a, like whatsapp economics right. right somebody sends you a whatsapp demonetization kar do black money khatam ho jayega nothing happened so i must say they learned quickly and they came back the second on the economic side again i would say is that they again reopened the idea of privatization mm. they might not have, might not have been able to do very much as yet but more will happen mm. so the idea that privatization of psus is a good idea is a very good thing the third thing that's happened in the country is that is that the direction that india's foreign policy had taken Let's mm. say uh, 1991 onwards, because 1990 the Cold War ended. By 1991, Cold War was completely over. So India started shifting its foreign policy from being from being caught in non fake non-alignment, because we we were supposedly non-aligned, but we have we were inclined heavily towards the Soviet bloc. So if Soviet bloc was no longer there, but still there was a lot of inertia in the system when it came to moving westwards. to shifting so every prime minister since then has done his bit this prime minister has done more than other prime ministers although lately we've seen it struggle a little bit government has equivocated a little bit but that's also necessary because russia is not a country that india can just dump like that <clears throat> but i would say that is a positive as well Uh, so these are these are the positives you just mentioned foreign policy and aman birthal another one you know our members he wants to know how india's foreign policy has changed under uh, the current minister s j shankar especially during russia ukraine war or is it a short term highlight that india is getting look uh, under uh, dr j shankar uh, india's foreign policy basically the direction is the same that's been set and that's a good thing uh, because A good direction was set uh, und- under Narasimha Rao in ninety one. Then Vajpayee took it forward, uh, and then Manmohan Singh pretty much kept it there because he signed the nuclear deal. Right. So that was that was a big shift. It was a big shift of global significance for India. Uh, but in Jay Shankar's times, the articulation of that foreign policy to global audiences, but more importantly to dom- domestic audiences, has become much. better and much sharper so that is the big change i don't think there is any fundamental shift in foreign policy yes there is some fundamental shift in some through some decisions that are linked to foreign policy for example change in the constitutional status of kashmir uh, so that in terms of international implications is i would say about 30% as significant as vajpayee carrying out the nuclear tests in 1998 uh then those uh, invited sanctions and uh, india then had to get out of the sanctions which was very skillfully done but this was done at a time uh, when india india was in a kind of a sweet spot uh, and that is the big shift which had implications on foreign policy uh, so michael iv wants to know have the chances of some kind of india pakistan rapprochement increased or decreased in the wake of imran khan's fall and the start of the sharif administration well whether the chances of india pakistan rapprochement have increased or declined that depends on how you define rapprochement right if you think that once again there'll be a summit meeting and there'll be a settlement of all our problems that's not going to happen uh i'm still hoping it will happen in my lifetime but i've been hoping for a long time so i don't know when that will happen if that can happen but certainly if india and pakistan resume trade right right that to me is reproshma that might sound a minimalistic expectation but that's reproshma today pakistan is in desperate need of wheat 
Why should it be buying, searching the world markets looking for wheat? It can buy from India. Very often you will find uh, simple things like potatoes, tomatoes, uh, nimbu right now. It's very expensive in country, one mm. country, not so in the other. Onions, right. cement, right? Uh, power. There's, there are times when India has excess power. Right now India has excess power funnily because uh, our states don't have the money to buy any power, right? Uh, so a lot of our plants are working at low capacity. So India and Pakistan, even if we restore our trade, restore our full diplomatic relations, that is a huge rapprochement. And the chance for that has improved a great deal now with Imran Khan's departure. Because you know, the disappointment with Imran Khan is not whether he was a hawk or a dove. By the way, I will tell you a story. Yes. Uh, Mr. Natwar Singh, who was our preeminent diplomat and also became foreign minister. Yes. So when he became foreign minister, uh, later, I think if I remember correctly, maybe under Manmohan Singh's government, somebody asked him in a press conference that, uh, are you a hawk or a dove? So he said, I am running a foreign ministry. I am not running a bird sanctuary. Right? <laughs> right. So, so, so Imran Khan was not a hawk or a dove. He was stupid. Right. Uh, and so many of us had known that he is an instinctive cricketer. He's a great cricketer. But a great cricketer or a great cricket star or great film star doesn't right. automatically become a great politician or a great statesman. Mm. Because for that, you need one attribute, which is humility. You should be willing to say, Ye mujhe nahi aata. I don't know this. I have never seen Imran Khan ever say, Ye mujhe nahi aata. You see, he said, he went to Kazakhstan. He says, I know more about Kazakhstan than any of you, more than Kazakh people. I know more about India than anybody does. I know more about Britannia than anybody does. Hello. Right. And then he made this famous gaffe where he said that the Brit pe British people like me so much, they wanted to ado adopt, adopt me as one of their own. But I am a Pakistani, I wasn't going to become a Brit. Because you know, if you draw lines over a donkey, it doesn't become a, a, a zebra. If you draw a line over a donkey, it doesn't become a An ass remains an ass. So who talks like that? I mean, it's not a statesman. He's not a funny guy. He, he, is the prime, he was the prime minister of a country having nuclear weapons. So India-Pakistan relations have suffered from many reasons. It's a chronic problem. But lately, uh, in the past year and a half or so, from Imran, Imran Khan's stupidity. Because he became, he became obsessed with the idea that he was the leader of the Islamic world. So mm. he began speaking a language which people were not expecting to hear from him. Uh, and that led to a lot of complications and complexities because diplomacy, politics, international relations, they have to be rooted in real politics and right. the real situation on the ground, not in ideology. Having said that, you know, uh, there was a member of ours who asked a question. Yes. Uh, and first of all, all members, please give us your names because you know what? I'm telling you a secret now. All the members whose questions we have picked up today, and I'm sorry for those who got left out because we can have only this many. We'll be said, please send us your names and addresses. We'll be sending you a modest, humble gift hamper with a few, with a few things uh, from us, just by way of saying thank you to you. So please don't forget. So he had asked the three positives, positives and, negatives. and three negatives of Modi government. So three negatives. The biggest negative is uh, Modi government's cons constant pushing at social cohesion in our country. Uh, so the beauty of our country and the success of our country lies in the fact that we've stayed not only together, but we've become stronger through the decades. Right. Uh, if you look at all the new uh, nations that came into being, say through decolonization or after the Second World War, of all the diverse nation that, nations that came into being, all have broken up. All have broken up except maybe two, except maybe Tanzania in Africa and India. I would have said Indonesia, but even Indonesia saw East Timor mm. break away. Small one, but still it broke away. But look at all of the world. All of the Soviet bloc broke up, right? Uh, it became so many republics out of the Soviet Union. Now, now uh, Putin is trying to put some, uh, some of that back. And you know the consequences. The world is destabilized. Czechoslovakia became so many countries. Now there's Czech Republic and so many more. Slovakia, 
again if you go to the balkans yugoslavia it broke up into so many pakistan broke up into two so almost every country that came into being after second world war and through the process of colonization decolonization broke up india has not ought to not only stayed together but has become stronger right that's because we've learned to live with our diversity we have learned to enjoy our diversity so the biggest negative is is trying to drive all of india in one direction in trying to homogenize us into mm. trying to uh, we are a salad bowl every ingredient is different but in trying to put us into a homogenizer a prrr, it comes out as one pulp wo is country ka kabhi nahi hone wala and if you push it that there will be an immune reaction and we we are beginning to see some of that right now so that is one negative the other negative is and, and which i worry about is this whole obsession with atmanirbharta mm. because we've seen this movie before and when we saw this movie before of protectionism it was like a tragic meena kumari movie so ek baar maine article bhi likha tha national interest the meena kumari politics right we were a country of cry babies constantly that whole world is against me are the whole world whole world is our playground right we should play in the whole world why should only we, we, we play in india so this is nonsensical to say that i will not buy from you if it cost me 100 rupees but i will have someone build it who will buy all the components in your country come back and put them all together he will sell it for 200 rupees mm. then our consumers will buy for 200 rupees and i will give you pli that is productivity linked incentive of a 100 rupees out of the taxpayers pocket that is catch 22 because we are being self reliant catch 22 <laughs> economics it's nonsensical so i see this as the second big big negative and the third negative is the third negative is just the just the dis, just the damage that's been done to our center state relations see people laughed at rahul gandhi when he said we are a union of states we are a union of states the way he put it uh, maybe was not done with finesse right but you don't expect finesse from rahul gandhi but the fact is that states have their own place in india and uh, today uh, say 2017 bjp ruled uh, states which comprised of about 70% of india's land mass today it's only 49% so you have to constantly be dealing with the states you have to constantly be trading space with them but if you are not willing to do that then centrifugal pressures come up and we are beginning to see those now and you see those now with the states filing criminal cases including under sedition law against people from the bjp also nishchay what's uh, he's one of our uh, viewers he wants to know what changes and transformation did you observe or witness in this 1000 episode journey regarding india with respect to society polity or economy which according to you stood out or was unique you know in its own sense and i would just like to add that prakash sonkar he's just taken a subscription on the eve of the 100 uh, 1000th ctc and he wants to know what is the motivation behind your continuity well first of all i can answer this first prakash ji motivation is people like you uh, who come to us i know that there is a lot available particularly on youtube uh, that is maybe more fun uh, uh, maybe more enjoyable more entertaining Uh, and i am sure there is a lot of gyan available and a lot of people talk about politics and things so uh, we have a lot of competition but when smart people like you come to us that's our motivation uh, we need we need no other motivation so thank you very much for being there and what was the other question and nishay what's wants to know in with respect to society polity or economy well, you know the journey through those 1000 episodes what changes have you witnessed well i think uh, the biggest thing is what has not changed and what has not changed is the indian resilience so through two phases of the pandemic we have seen that resilience remain threat from china right uh, lots lots have happened which could have shaken most countries but india has handled it stoically and very strongly with a great deal of strength that is one thing the other thing is there is a sense of confidence that you see in some parts of india uh, a kind of bangalorization of other regions of india although at the same time they are worrying signs particularly from the hindi heartland uh, with where there is so much joblessness but at the same time i see a new entrepreneurial entrepreneurial energy which is not confined and this is particularly among the young not confined just to bangalore this is now spreading out of bangalore uh, well i'll end our conversation with this very interesting comment from prayukt 
uh, I'm just going to read it out. And he says, SG was in Mexico City when the asteroid that wiped out the dinos crashed in the Yucatan Peninsula 66 million years ago. SG and his photographer got an actual pic of the ejecta cloud and the 100-foot tsunami that followed. And then he quotes, the waters were so high that we didn't have to take a shower for two days. <laughs> it is said that SG's new pair of glasses and his barely used comb, gifted by none other than LK Adwani, who was in college then, are part of the KT boundary layer in the vicinity of a North Mexican city waiting to be excavated. SG was there to cover the arrival of the first members of the Homo sapiens group that left Africa and crossed the Red Sea to land in what is now Israel. SG had danced at that event. And when the Mahabharata war was on, SG was asked by none other than Duryodhan for doing an exclusive interview with him, Duryodhan had in fact asked SG to tell Yudhishthir that he planned to use a nuclear weapon in case the Kaurav army was beaten by the Pandava army. SG was also the only journo who has filed stories in 14 scripts including Harappan. There is nothing that SG hasn't seen or heard. SG's biography is called A Short History of Time. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. That's very imaginative. So I can tell you, as someone who was trained to be a reporter and will always remain a reporter, I wish I could be present at all these, <laughs> at all of these. Uh, but you have only one life. And I think in that one life, I've had a lot of uh, exper good experience, interesting experiences, good and bad. Uh, and viewers, readers, you all stayed with us. Now, uh, well, you got me thinking uh, for somebody who was trained to be a reporter and once a reporter, always a reporter. No reporter misses, likes to miss a good story. Every reporter hates missing a good story. So I hate the fact that I've missed all these great <laughs> stories and I wish I could be present at all of those. But you know what? You have one lifetime. It doesn't last millions of years for sure. So you do what you can do in one lifetime. And to that extent, I think I've had rich experiences so far. I've had the good fortune of being in lots of interesting newsy situations. These are all not all good situations, right. but interesting newsy situations. And I hope that part of my life continues. But yes, I do wish I was around 65 million years ago in Mexico City. <laughs> and as we wrap up this very special edition of Cut the Clutter, we would like to make an appeal to our subscribers. Do subscribe to the print. We have exciting content on our YouTube channel. Do follow us on social media as well. And thank you so much for being part of this journey. And if you want to take a paid subscription, the link is right here. So please click on the link and it'll take you right there.